The Lotus Amira was initially marketed with an entry point at under £60,000. This is what initially enticed people to the model range. So how did we get to where we are today? Where we've got two first edition models, the AMG i4 with a base price of 81495 and the Toyota V6 powertrain model at a base price of 85995 Also, we currently have over 60 models being advertised in the classifieds for sale. How did that come about? In 2021, Lotus announced that there would be a first edition of the Amira released in spring of 2022, and that model would be based on a Toyota 3.5 V6. They also announced that there would be an entry point model that would be released later in 2023, which would have a base price of under £60,000. Subsequently, they also announced a Mercedes AMG based 2 litre i4 model, which would be released later on after the initial first edition Toyota based V6. There was also a statement made by Lotus around March of 2022, I believe, that the first edition of Toyota based 3.5 V6 was going to be released at 71,995, but that never happened. That just got forgotten about somehow. But I have seen an announcement. Um, I have seen a statement from, from Lotus online where they have said that it was going to release initially at 71,995. Now the model that I ordered had a base price of 75,995 and with adding in the full black pack etc that took the price up to around 82,000 pounds on the road that's included all taxes so that's VAT and road tax etc. Now it's been well publicized that the first edition models had multiple delays. This impacted Lotus to such an extent that they had to put the prices up during the initial production run in 2022. Now people were told by Lotus that there would be no impact to their pricing if they had a deposits down and those deposits were locked in. But Lotus went back on that word and upset a lot of customers because those people who had their, their deposits down and their prices locked in or supposedly locked in, their prices were increased accordingly. However, the people that were given an initial draft bill date and collection date their prices were actually locked in and, and their prices weren't increased. So a lot of the customers who had their deposits down, they were really upset, especially customers who had their deposit down on the AMG Twin Turbo 2 litre. As of today, October 2023, the Toyota based V6 3.5 model has a base price of 85,995 and the Mercedes AMG base has a base price of 81,495. Now that's a considerable shift forward than the initial marketed price of under £60,000. Now obviously these are first edition models and these first edition models have a very high specification so they were never going to be the models that were released at a price under £60,000. That entry level model was due to be released after the first edition models have completed their full production run. Of course we're not there yet due to multiple delays that have occurred. So we can see there that there is still perceivably an entry point Lotus Mirror that's going to arrive after the full initial production run of the first editions but when that's going to arrive, nobody seems to know. It certainly isn't advertised on the Lotus website at the moment. The only models you can purchase at the moment are the Toyota-based 3.5 V6 and the Mercedes-based AMG 2.0-litre twin turbo. That in itself has caused a disruption in the customer marketplace because people are still yet to see that base entry-level model at under £60,000. For the first model range, that was never going to exist. That was never going to happen because the first edition models were always going to be a lot more expensive. And of course, a lot of people didn't take into account the APR on finance, the additional costs of financing and the additional costs of actual on the road. You know, for example, registration plates and also value added tax and of course, on the road tax. If you're enjoying the video so far, please think about taking some time out and clicking that like button. And also, if you like this type of content, then please make sure you subscribe to be able to get notified for all future content. Now back to the video. Now looking at the classifieds, there's over 63 Lotus Amiras currently marketed for sale. Why is that? What's happening there? That is a real barometer of how the market is at the moment. Remember the base price for these first edition models is still 85,995 for the Toyota base V6 and for the Mercedes AMG twin turbo two litre, it's 81,495. So why are these cars being, being marketed for sale? And they're marketed for sale between 69,000 
and 89,000 respectively. So that's the range of cars that are available for sale at the moment. As you can see here, you've got quite a substantial different range in mileage on these cars but they're not all high they're not high mileage i think the one of the highest mileage cars that i've seen there in the lower range of price is around seven thousand but you've got cars that are around you know around 700 500 miles 700 miles 500 miles and in but all variances in between but they're only you know they're only a year old they're only 2022 cars that they're very earliest that they're very oldest why is there 63 cars being marketed for sale so soon and and again a lot of these cars are marketed with very low mileage so these cars just haven't been driven well my take on it is that a lot of these cars first of all were purchased perceiving that people were going to be be able to sell them for overs and of course with the change in the marketplace with the financial downturn and with the delays etc that have occurred which has shifted all the production run later on down which has moved that production run closer and closer and, and also now into this financial downturn that those overs just are not realized now they're just not going to be realized and not going to be available so those people who bought those cars expecting to be able to make a profit on them is putting are putting them onto the market now before perceivably that the market is going to get any worse because even though this isn't a good time to put cars on the marketplace we're coming into winter now in the uk people are putting them onto the marketplace now because they're perceiving that in springtime 2024 the market's going to be even worse the downturn's going to hit even harder therefore even though that would be a better time perceivably to sell um, with regards to the weather conditions it may not with regards to the financial climate so that's perceivably why these people are putting these cars on the market at the moment a lot of those people again this is those people who were looking to make a profit out of the cars did were never going to really keep the cars in addition you also have the people that have been impacted by the financial downturn and it's impacted them in many ways now it may have impacted them by the fact that they bought the car in finance and they found that when they refinance, that the finance figures are going to go exponentially a lot higher. Um, at the, you know, previously when the Lotus Mirror was around, you're looking at finance rates of around seven seven percent APR. Now that was through Lotus's direct finance scheme. That was the only way you could finance the car at the time, which is absolutely flipping crazy. I went to great detail about that in my previous video and I'll drop a link again in the description below um, so that you can catch that video. And those APR rates, of course, have gone up substantially now with the, with the increase in the Bank of England interest rates. So those, those finance options that existed back in the day in 2022 and early 2022 just are no longer available now. Um, so those people may have been impacted by those by those finance rates. And if those people have bought those cars recently, they will have paid exponentially a lot more on finance. So their finance rates, rates would be a lot higher. And with the downturn in the economy, it may be that they've been impacted harder in other areas of their of their life. Um, mortgages, etc. It may be that their mortgages come up for renewal. And of course, the interest rates have meant that the mortgages have substantially increased if you've got to go along with the with the new Bank of England base rates. So obviously, your mortgage rate will be at a position higher than the Bank of England base rate. So that would have impacted people substantially as well. And that would have meant that obviously luxury goods, luxury items then have to go. And that may be why some of these Amiras are on the marketplace at the moment as well. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that is why a lot of these Amiras are on the marketplace at the moment too. And looking at these cars that are being marketed and classified, say you've got low mileage cars from around 69,000, between 69,000 and 70,000, you've got low mileage cars being available. And these are first edition cars, remember, so they're very highly spec'd anyway. Even if you didn't tick the full black pack and um, some of the other various options, then you're still having a very highly spec Lotus Amira because the first edition models were very highly specified. So if you get if you go for one of these low mileage cars around sixty nine to seventy thousand pounds, which are marketed at the moment, it's a no brainer. I mean, why would you pay? 85,995 is the base price to get into a brand new Lotus Amira now. When you can go to the classified, you can get one for around 70,000 pounds, 70, 71, 72,000 pounds. I don't wanna do Lotus a disservice because I think the, the company is fantastic. And I think it's brilliant that they've produced this car and I still really love the Amira, uh, but I'm not gonna be buying a new Amira now, not with all these cars being available in the, in the marketplace. It's supply and demand, simple supply and demand with 60 odd cars available in the classifieds ranging from 69,000 to 89,000 pounds that's obviously based on age and specification but as I say they're all first edition models so they're all going to be highly spec'd anyway so it'll be based on 
Um, the diff slight differences in specification and, of course, mileage, mileage and age, well, that would be the biggest thing. But you're only talking about one year difference and the mileage isn't going to be substantially high anyway. I think I saw a couple of cars there around over 7000 miles. Um, but that's still not a high mileage amount, really, for these cars. Maximum, they're going to be a year old. So that how high can the mileage be? And compared to the actual base price for these first edition models of 85,995 and 81,495, then it's a no-brainer. And if you're looking to purchase on a second-hand market one of the AMG-based i4 2.0-litre twin-turbo models, then they're going to be very, very new. Um, I, I didn't actually look for the separation in the different models, which were the V6 and which were the, the straight four, four pot two litre. But if you're looking for an AMG powered four pot two litre twin turbo, then they were only released fairly recently. So they're gonna be pretty much brand spanking new. And if those AMG powered i4s are under the 80,000 price point, then perceivably you could be getting a bit of a bargain there. And you're not going to have to wait, of course, because there's still a long wait list for these cars. In addition, like my situation, there's a lot of cars that have been cancelled and a lot of cars are at dealerships. Brand new cars are at dealerships and they have, they're not being collected by owners. So you're having the, the, the double edged situation there where you've got 63 cars being advertised in the classifiers. And also you've got a lot of cancelled orders, which are at the dealerships at the moment coupled with, of course, all the impact from the financial downturn. So this has got to be substantially impacting Lotus. So why are people canceling their orders? Why are people not going forward with the cars? Well, as I've already detailed, the financial downturn, um, if people are buying these on finance options, then those finance options, the APR will be a lot higher. So those, those cars aren't so enticing <laughs> when you're having to pay an, an extortionate amount on a monthly basis to be able to pay off these cars. So that would be a lot of reason why people have decided to cancel their orders. Also, I suspect a lot of the people who had their deposits down and then had their prices increased, even though it was promised by Lotus that there would not, not be any price increases for those who had hard and fast deposits down. I suspect a lot of those people's de people decided to cancel as well because it made them very unhappy. They felt that Lotus went back on their word. The constant production delays also, that would have caused a lot of people to cancel. And I know that was one of the major factors for a lot of people canceling. They just were not happy with the constant delays in the production run. Also, a lot of people had great expectations of the Mercedes AMG based i4 twin turbo two litre model. But when the first reviews were released with journalists actually getting hold of the first AMG two litre twin turbo models, the reviews were, were quite lukewarm. A lot of the journalists were talking about turbo lag. And because, of course, that AMG 2.0-litre twin turbo had been tuned substantially higher in other car models, in other, in other models where it had been used in the Mercedes range, um, it was tuned down for the Lotus Emira. Now, the reason it was tuned down was perceived be for two reasons. First of all, because that AMG 2.0-litre plant is mounted mid-engined in the Lotus Emira, the Lotus Emira isn't designed to be able to extract the heat away as, as efficiently as a front engine car. So as one of the Mercedes front engine car where that AMG um, four pot twin turbo engine was mounted. Now, a second reason why they may have decided to tune down the engine is because they didn't want to compete with later models coming on down the range. So it may be that they're deciding that they're going to tune the engine up for later models. Now, perceivably, they have to be able to um, provide better cooling for that engine, um, which they can do with body, body changes later on, body design changes later on with the Lotus Amira. So it may be that they're, they're withholding it and they don't want it to compete with later models so that they can release later models with a higher performance rating later on down the production run. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.